Hey guys, welcome back to News of Science, where we discuss comics, movies, games, and more. And today, I'm going to be reviewing Marvel's What If, Episode 1. Now, this one is titled, What If Captain Carter Were the First Avenger? Now, I was very much looking forward to this episode because it's definitely a different take on the Captain America story that we know from the MCU. And just a little bit of a backstory, kind of like a simple one, but... Basically, What If is actually an adaptation of the actual What If comics from Marvel Comics. Only in this way, this one tells the story from like an MCU perspective, but I guess in an alternate reality kind of way. And just to know a little bit more for more clarity, What If also shows a character that we know from the comics known as The Watcher, played by Jeffrey Wright, who voices the character. And basically, The Watcher's job is to basically observe all the alternate timelines that play out throughout the multiverse. And thanks to the Loki series, now we're exploring a little bit more in depth of the multiverse. And yes, this is canon to the MCU. So basically, What If is based on the events that have played out throughout the MCU as we know it. And this show goes in assuming that you're caught up with everything that's occurred throughout the MCU timeline, at least the prime timeline. But this visits alternate timelines where more or less similar events do play out but in a different way. So in this case, instead of Steve Rogers getting the super soldier serum and becoming Captain America, Peggy Carter, due to like some sort of accident that occurred throughout the experimentation, you know, throughout the project, Captain Carter intervenes or, and, you know, becomes the new super soldier and becomes the new hero to save and stop World War II from happening and to save the world. Now, this was a really fun episode to watch. A lot of the moments from this episode does play familiar beats. Now, if you've seen any of the Marvel movies like Captain America, the first Avenger, you'd be familiar with a lot of the events that do play out throughout the series. And it, it just plays in a similar fashion, but in a different way, like the train sequence, of course, where like Captain America, where he gets the super soldier serum instead of Captain America, Steve Rogers getting it. Peggy Carter jumps in and takes the serum herself and becomes the new super soldier. Now, I thought that she was going to be called Captain Britain, but, you know, she's obviously wearing the British attire as a captain, but she's actually just Captain Carter. Um, but you can also call it Captain Britain if you want. She does get the vibranium shield. She does have the attire. She kicks a lot of ass in a similar fashion how Captain Steve Rogers does as well in his movie. So overall, the show's very entertaining. I only had wished it was a little bit longer. This episode does last about 30 minutes, and I'm assuming because it's animation and animation takes a while to complete, each of these episodes are gonna play out like about roughly 30 minutes. The animation is beautiful. I love the animation here. It, it It's kind of like funny how like the characters move because it is an animated series. You can never do something like this in live action. I mean, I'm sure it can be done as a film, but as an episodic kind of live action series, it'd be way more expensive to do something like this. And because this isn't exactly part of like the prime MCU canon, even though it is MCU canon, I know it sounds like I'm contradicting myself. That's why they probably went with animating this series. And a lot of the actors who play these characters in live action actually managed to return to voice their respective roles. And I had a really great time watching this series. So I'm sorry if I'm bringing this review kind of late. But one criticism I do really want to address is the pacing of this episode. Now, this episode does go in assuming that you're familiar with a lot of the beats that do play out in the MCU canon. It's just that sometimes I feel like this episode, or at least the series, judging by the way it's playing, being played out, does go rushed out. You know, There are a couple of montages familiar to Captain America, the first Avenger. It does seem to be moving forward fast. And it kind of assumes that the audience knows and is familiar with the MCU canon. So I'm just thinking like, ooh, like this, this episode is really moving kind of quickly, jumping to familiar events in the timeline of the MCU. And it's just going, here it is, action fighting here. Here it is, action fighting here. And it's kind of quick and it kind of blows up in your face in a way. It's a little, and sometimes it can be a little much to you know handle. It could be a little overwhelming. There isn't a lot of moments where we get to like relax and take in the moment after we get into the next action scene. It's just very quickly, a lot of explosions, a lot of kicking, a lot of fighting, a lot of punching, a lot of shield bashing and everything. I'm like, whoa, 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 slow down. Let's take a breather and let's just have a moment. We do have a moment between Peggy Carter and of course Steve Rogers because there is a romance there, but it's not fully entirely explored. And again, you know, not to sound like I'm trying to throw in spoilers because I don't want to do it, but assuming that you all people that are watching this review know the MCU canon and lore, 
Um, basically, towards the end, Peggy Carter plays the sacrifice play, very similar to how Steve Rogers played the sacrifice play by going down with the ship into the ice. In this case, when the Red Skull was using the Tesseract to breach a portal, a tentacle kind of creature was coming right through, and Peggy Carter pushed the creature back into the portal and went with the creature and then teleport it to the main current timeline where it's the opening of the Avengers and Peggy Carter just jumps right through and there's Nick Fury and Hawkeye. And I'm like thinking, oh wow, now Peggy Carter is the current super soldier of the modern times instead of Steve Rogers. So we could only assume that Steve Rogers basically lived out the rest of his days, you know, grew up, perhaps got a family and whatnot. And now Peggy is a loner. She's a woman out of time and she's a super soldier, and I'm pretty sure this isn't the last time we've seen of her. Overall, I had fun with this episode. Just a little minor issue with the pacing, because obviously this series is assuming that its audience knows the MCU canon. It gets to take advantage of that, just jump around into different events of the MCU canon, and just play out like that. So yeah, it is kind of quick paced. You obviously need to be very familiar with the MCU canon to watch this series, in my opinion, I, at least I think. And uh, yeah, uh, it was overall a very good episode. That's like the only minor criticism I had. Other than that, the voice work, the animation was stupendous. And I really had a great time watching it. So I look forward to more episodes. I'm definitely looking forward to that Spider-Man Doctor Strange episode. And I can't wait to see that one. So I'm very excited about that. Aside from that, guys, thank you so much for watching. That was my review of What If Episode 1. What if Captain Carter were the first Avenger? What did you guys think of it? Did you guys see the first episode? Comment down, let me know in the comment section below if you did and if you enjoyed it. And if you're looking forward to more, comment down as well and let me know as well. Thank you all so much for watching as always, guys. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click on bell notifications so you all don't miss anything as always. I will see you all in the next comment panel.